We live? All right, so listen, welcome to episode two, Rants and Gems on YouTube Live. Um, my name is Matthew Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG The Mortgage Guy. You can catch me on Instagram, MG The Mortgage Guy. If you're unfamiliar with me, please go over there, get to know me. I'm not going to bore you with my long story because we started late, so we need to get this show on the road. So, first things first, before I introduce my lovely, lovely ghost, my guest today, um, let me give you a little bit of background for those who are new to me to this show. This is an interactive show. Please be in the comments, ask your questions. I'm going to try to get to them. And then, um, you know, if we have the ability, time to bring you on and answer with live calls, we'll do that too. But for right now, we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to introduce you to my special guest, Miss Nikki Murkison. Nikki, what's up? What's up, man? Yeah. How are you? I'm <laughs> you good? Finally, yes. Finally, right? Yes. So t talk to the people. Like, So people, I've known Nikki since 2011 from my time at Chase at the Blue Donut. Um, <laughs> shout out to all my people at Chase. Hey, so, Chase. What's up? Nothing but love for my, my folks at Chase. So Nikki, <clears throat> give them a little bit of background of who you are, your past, the whole nine yards. So yes, Matt and I, have. Uh, we met at Chase. And um, I started at Chase as a teller at 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of was very good at sales. So I worked my way up, um, did some customer service on a platform, and then I got into the mortgage industry at 23 years old. Um, so I was a loan officer. I was a loan officer for 17 years. So Matt and I were actually um, at the same company. Mm -hmm. we, we were loan officers. Yeah. But then I went into another role, business development. Um, but basically, I grew up in Queens. And um, like most people who grew up in my neighborhood, you know, I didn't learn about financial education in my household. Um, my parents didn't teach about financial education. And of course, financial education is not taught in schools. No, um, not at all. So I was very fortunate to get a job at Chase as a teller because that's where I began my learning about money and how people work with money. And then getting into the mortgage industry, you basically see people financially naked. You know, you look at their income, their assets, you, you ask them about their future goals, you basically know everything about them and things that they don't even tell their husbands yeah, or all wives. Their wives. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they so, tell us all their secrets, right? All their secrets, all their financial secrets. Yeah. Um, and then also... But sometimes you're like a little therapist, too. You to are a therapist, absolutely, because, you know, they're not talking to anyone else about their finances. But when you get a loan, you have to expose yourself. You have to be vulnerable. And um, so it, it taught me a lot. And I worked in the boroughs. I worked in Queens. I worked in Harlem. And then I worked in Midtown. And once I got to Midtown, that's uh -huh. when I really learned about how wealthy people <laughs> move their money around and how wealth, what the relationship between um, wealthy people and money. Um, so, but the thing is, when I worked in Midtown and I did a lot of mortgages for wealthy people, I also did a lot of mortgages for people who were the restaurant workers in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, the and business owners, the small business owners. Yeah, not even the owners. Okay. The people that worked in the, um, the coffee shops and the um, restaurants. And what they would do is, most of the time they weren't from this country, but they would pool together their money and they would purchase homes. And that, like that gave me the confidence that, hey, if they could do it, I can do it. Because they have really small wages. Um, but they really stuck together to get that home. And then once they got that home with their families, they would branch off and get their own homes. Um, so I purchased my first home at 29. And um, Where did you purchase that? I purchased in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. So I'm born and raised in Queens. I didn't really know a lot about Brooklyn except for, you know, what was on the news. Mm -hmm. No shade. <laughs> but um, what, I, year, what year did you purchase? That was in 2000. 2000 so was, something? Yeah, 2000 something. 2000 now, something. It was, it was actually 14 years ago. Okay. And, and so do the math. I know I've been banking, but we use computers. Yeah, no, I get it. But, so <laughs> 2014 years ago in Brooklyn. Yeah. So I'm sure you got a steal because that's before the gentrification was really going place and going going strong in Brooklyn, right? It was. It was when they called. It was in. So I purchased in Bed Stuy, and that was when it was called Do or Die Bed Stuy. Yeah. And I now wanted to purchase else. in Harlem, 
but I was priced out of Harlem. Like Harlem was moving and a friend of mine was like, hey, um, I just bought a brown, because I was in love with brownstones. And he said, I just bought a brownstone in Brooklyn. So I was like, oh, okay, well, where'd you find your broker? And they were like Craigslist. And it was before Craigslist yeah. was creepy. It wasn't yeah. creepy. It wasn't creepy time. then. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was... So I, I connected with a broker, and he was like an Israeli Jewish guy, and he was, you know, really pushy. And at first, I thought he was trying to take advantage of me, but he really took me under his wing, and he, you know, toured me around Brooklyn and Bed Stuy, and and talked to me about the changes. But I also did my research, so that was six years before Barclays was built. Okay. Um, so every city has a plan for the neighborhoods in that city. So, so, let, so let's get into that. Before we jump fast forward, right? So yes. I want you to talk a little bit about when you was in business development for Chase, mm -hmm. right? You focused on um, community development, a lot of analytics, mm -hmm. things of that nature. That's your background, yes. right? Yes, yeah. And community, um, working with nonprofits. Working with the nonprofits. So mm -hmm. the reason why I, I wanted Nikki on the show is because she's a specialist. She's she's a a seasoned investor, um, seasoned loan officer, but also doing a lot of business development, nonprofit. So she's out there in the community, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing all that good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to talk about an area. This spotlight right here is is about bringing attention to areas to invest, right? So Nikki, she if you go to her page, tell the people your Instagram. Uh, Nikki Nikki Merck. Nikki Merck. So if yeah. you go to Nikki Merck and you go to her Instagram, you'll see there's a lot of information there, and she's always doing these um, property, these area spotlights. Um, but you call it something different. You call it the Gen Report, right? The Gen Report. So talk to talk to us about the Gen Report and what's the, what's the what's the background? Why did you start doing the Gen Report? Well, going into these neighborhoods, um, working in community development, I really get to see these neighborhoods raw and see what's happening. Um, and going into these neighborhoods and, and teaching people about money and, and their relationship with money and then home ownership, um, it kind of felt like I was selling a dream. Um, so then I really started incorporating neighborhoods into my workshops because people need to understand why they're buying. They need to think about home ownership differently. I okay. know a lot of people think when they think about buying a home, they think about the big home, you know, yeah. they're, the, they're, the picket fence, exactly. the big backyard, barbecues and bar mitzvahs, that exactly. type of thing. Exactly. Okay. Um, but w the way we really should be thinking about home ownership is like an investment, right? This is going to be the biggest purchase you're going to make in your life. And you need to think with an investor's eye. So when you're looking at neighborhoods or where you want to live, you need to really do your research on that neighborhood, especially the way neighborhoods are changing now. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be where wealthy people would go out to the suburbs, yeah. right? And the, the lower income people would be in the inner cities. Um, and now there's a shift. So now um, wealthier people want to come to the cities or the urban areas where there's access to jobs, um, and access Transport to transportation, transportation. Uh -huh. and um, and now that's pushing um, people that were in those neighborhoods out further away from job opportunities and transportation. Um, so that was an issue for me. So I wanted to really talk to people about staying in their neighborhood because most people, uh -huh. when they think about making it, they say, you know, I need to get out of the hood, yeah. right? But I'm trying to teach people to stay in the hood, understand what's going on. Don't get mad because people are moving in your neighborhood. Find out what they know, yeah. right? And everybody has access to information about neighborhood changes. But you know what, though? A lot of people just don't know where to find it. And that, and that's the problem. You know you know what they say. You want to hide something from somebody, put it in the book, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and wow. Even on I Google. never heard that, but yeah. that's, that's, that's what deep. They, that's what they say. You know, a lot of people don't read. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't take the time to do their due diligence and do their research. So that's right. why every time you make a post about um, your gym report, yes. I, I love it. And I wound up reposting something that you did and it, and it took off and people were really, really paying attention to it and asking a lot of questions. Right. So I want to talk about Kensington, mm -hmm. Kensington, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. right? That's an area that you own property in, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. So talk to the people about the Kensington area and in Philadelphia, is in Philadelphia, the Philly. Oscars? It's in Philadelphia. It's, it's in yeah. Philadelphia. It's an opportunity zone, correct? Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity zone. So it's a great place to invest. Um, so give us a little bit of background that we may not know from a corporate analyst perspective. Uh, right. What's going on out there and why is Kensington such a great place to invest in? 
So my job relocated me to Philadelphia. Uh -huh. And I knew I wanted to invest in Philadelphia because it reminded me of New York. You know, I'm born and raised in New York. Um, but it looks Philly, like a little bit. it does look <laughs> yeah, like Brooklyn. It, looks like it Brooklyn. really does. Yeah. I mean, you got the brownstones in Brooklyn, you got the row houses in Philly, same thing, right? Yeah, to same me, thing. you know, same thing. Um, but it also has that inner city vibe, it has that grit. And I fell in love with Philly instantly. So I really wanted to invest there because it was so cheap, you know, especially coming from New York. Absolutely. And I toured, the thing about Philly people, I mean, they are really welcoming. Um, well, not at first, but <laughs> they were welcoming and they, they wanted to take me around to the different neighborhoods. And I, I toured so many different, and they kept taking me to these like, more wealthier neighborhoods, I guess, because they thought I was from New York, you know, yeah, and they I'm thought like, you wanted to spend big money. Yeah, no, 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 I want the grit, you know. So um, I, I stumbled upon Kensington, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is it, right? And the one thing that stuck stood out in Kensington is the transportation. Okay. They have the train station, the L train, that goes directly to the city, right? Um, and of course, that's where all the job opportunities are. So as soon as I saw now, when you that, say a city, you mean downtown? Center city, yeah, center, center city, city okay. Philadelphia. Um, and again, when neighborhoods change, I had already witnessed the changes in New York. So to go in another city, you can already identify areas that are going to change right before they change. Um, and transportation is the biggest reason why areas change, right? Okay. Um, so I started doing some research on Kensington. I know it's like they have a really bad um, opioid issue there. Okay. But they were, the government was dumping a lot of money um, in that neighborhood to try to so wait a minute. find so, support so for... So is, is Kensington like The Wire? Like, what are you trying to tell us right now? It's not like The Wire because The Wire was crack. <laughs> and opioid is a totally, it's a totally different, different drug. monster. Yeah, it's a totally different drug. So There's, are we going to walk out our, 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 our front door and, and, and see zombies? Is what you will see me? zombies. I mean, okay. I've literally seen people laying on the ground just zombied out. Okay. Um, but it doesn't scare me, right? You just walk over them because guess what? I'm from New York. I, I live through the crack epidemic, so opioid ain't nothing. Okay. So you know, I, I, a lot of people were saying, no, don't go there. There's a lot of drugs. But it, again, there was a lot of support for what was going on in Kensington. But um, what really got me is the transportation. So I decided to purchase a property in Kensington. It was a diamond and a rough. Um, How I much found did you pay perfect for it? property. I paid two hundred and sixty thousand for it. Okay. Um, and uh, that was in October of two thousand eighteen. So single less family, than a year ago. It's family, a row house. house. It's three okay. stories, um, and it was in a, on a really nice block um, in Kensington, and it's in East Kensington. Okay. So East Kensington is like the neighborhood that changed first. Um, but when I first got there, it was still a little rough around the edges. And two months after I, I um, purchased the property, um, J.P. Morgan Chase made an announcement that they were dumping five million in Kens Kensington uh, for re revitalization, um, revitalization project. So what exactly? So J.P. Morgan Chase, and this was last year. This was last year. Last year, yeah. they announced they're yeah. going to dump five million. Right. So they're working the with um, a collaboration of organizations to um, revitalize that neighborhood. Okay, so what exactly are they, are they doing? Are they opening up school programs? Are they just building parks? Well, they're building like, a exactly commercial corridor. Doing? Okay. So they're so going to build jobs. up. They're actually bringing jobs. Um, they're helping, those nonprofits are helping to support those um, centers for people who are, you know, um, on the drugs and trying to bring okay. them to a safe place. Um, so they're really trying to redevelop that area. So they're cleaning it up. J.P. Morgan is putting five million. Uh, do you know of any other corporations that are, are, are following suit of what J.P. Morgan is doing? Well, I mean, J.P. Morgan is a leader. You know, it's only a matter of time. And they have, they, they have a big expansion going on in, in the entire Philadelphia area, So let me right? just, yeah, let me mention that. They expanded into different cities, and Philadelphia is one of the cities. Um, but also, They know something. Well... <laughs> They've they been doing something. their research, right? Yeah. All the, if you if you take a look around across the country, all urban areas are um, gentrifying. You look at what's happening in New York. You look at what's happening in Detroit. You look at what's happening in D.C. Right? Philadelphia is right on that Amtrak line. So you got New York, you got New Jersey, you got Philadelphia, you got Delaware, you got D.C., and you got Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So if you look across, you know that um, that Amtrak line then you'll see these cities 
okay. changing and these urban areas changing. Um, but also, they, they collaborated with um, a couple of nonprofit organizations that are already in that community. And, um, and they're really trying to help people in that community invest in that community. There's a program called Jumpstart. Okay. And Jumpstart actually... And it's only for Philadelphia, Jumpstart? It's only for Philadelphia residents, but it's really to encourage those residents to invest in their neighborhoods. So they put you through a training program. It's a three-day um, training program where they really teach you about investing in property and everything you need to know about property. Um, and, it, and at the end of the program, once you graduate, you get connected with a loan program where they'll actually lend you the money to purchase a property, do some renovations, and really buy and hold. Wow. Yeah. And Kensington and is a buy and hold area. I mean, you really don't want to go in there to do flips. Now, I mean, you can because when I purchased that property in October, mm -hmm. um, a couple of weeks ago, I went back to the house and three doors down, there's two properties for sale for 480 Damn. And that's less than six months that, and I'm, so. that's not to say it's going to sell for 480 <laughs> but that's a big jump that's from a, 260 that, to 480 that's a in crazy, less than six that's, months that's a crazy yeah. jump Cha -ching. <laughs> that is a crazy jump yeah. right why so why is that house now worth 480 in this area because you just said listen there's zombies outside yep jp morgan just committed five million yeah and they're cleaning it up and they're, they're cleaning it up there's a huge drug problem in this area yeah but they're cleaning everything up which right. is a great thing how the hell did it go up 200k well, in six developers months? are there you know once those developers get if you look if you go to kensington now and you drive around all you see is development project all you see is coffee shops and restaurants um right now I, where i purchased the house is two blocks away from frankfurt and frankfurt is just a restaurant row right so um, there's another neighborhood that's right next door that already gentrified, right? So what happens when neighborhoods change, they get outpriced out of one neighborhood and then they go into the, the neighboring um, community. And then, you know, it, it all takes off from there. And again, all of these neighborhoods are right next to the transportation, which is the L train going to downtown. Damn, that's an interesting... Um Interesting story. It's 260. I just can't get that out of my head. I, know, I, I just, just keep thinking like, damn, 260 to four something? I think I'm getting good at this. But my goal <laughs> is to teach other people to look at home ownership different. Because, you know, everything else is changing but home ownership. When I get married and have a kid, I'll have a home. Or you get that big house with the white picket fence. But people really need to think about it like an investment and you know I so after 23 years of working um, in banking I was able to quit my job right I was okay. able to quit my job um, to really turn my home ownership purchases or my portfolio into mm -hmm. a business all right so let's so, talk about that so mm -hmm. let's we're going to get back to Kensington in a minute so let's talk about the traditional mm -hmm. home ownership like the, the 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 big backyard, the white fence versus the non-traditional. Right. right. So let's go into that for a little bit. So non-traditional is just not thinking about it as, again, like I said, you know, when I get married and have kids, I'll buy a house. You know, really thinking about it as an investment and your entryway into entrepreneurship. If you do the right research, if you're researching a neighborhood that you're looking to purchase in and you look at that neighbor look and do the research to see what that neighborhood is going to look like for i mean five to ten years out mm -hmm. and every city has a plan for their neighborhood so it, in kensington and philadelphia they have a plan all the way out to 20 i think 23. Mm -hmm. so you can look at each strategic plan for every neighborhood in philadelphia and see what the plans are so if you see big developments or major developments if you see mom or pop, pop shops turning into big chain stores, right? If you see a stadium or um, some big type of development that's getting ready to happen, that may be a neighborhood that you should pay attention to. So how would the everyday home buyer, right? Because mm -hmm. you're corporately trained, um, you're savvy, you're smart, mm -hmm. you're an investor, right? Like, So how would the everyday, you know, 23 year old who doesn't know a damn thing about real estate, mm -hmm. how to find things, like how would they go ahead and research, you know, the, the future plans of, of a particular city? Like, do you have any websites or anything? So you can, can go, go to? to the planning department. So New York City, you can go to New York City planning department and you mm -hmm. can see what neighborhoods in New York City because I know it's, 
you know, a lot of neighborhoods are changing, what, uh, but there's still opportunity. But you can go to the Philadelphia Planning what Department. Should they, what should they look for? Just like, Google Philadelphia Planning Department. Google New York Planning Department. When you go on the website, it's going to show you, it'll say the strategic plan for every neighborhood. So you'll see every neighborhood there. You'll see Kensington. You'll see other neighborhoods like Germantown. Um, and you'll see all of the plans for those neighborhoods. You click on the plan, and then it'll basically tell you all the projects um, that they're planning. I would also say go to community board meetings. So if there's a neighborhood that you're interested in, attend their community board meetings because oftentimes when developers want to come into that neighborhood, they have to go before the community board um, to, to get the buy-in from the community. So, so how, how does the everyday person find these community meetings like is there like a there's google it i was about to say google's your best friend i mean you can google Classify. any question and you can plug it in and it'll bring up the information so if you're saying hey i want to purchase in kensington you're going to google um kensington philadelphia right and then you'll you'll google kensington philadelphia community board and it'll tell you the different community boards and just attend the meetings and see what's going on in that community and that'll give you um, some insight on some of the projects that they're working on. So the first time home buyer needs to start thinking like the investor. They have to. S start really mapping out. See the t now let's talk about the traditional, right? Mm -hmm. And I try to tell people this all the time. Most people come to me without having a team in place. Right. Like, oh, I want to buy a house and I want to get a rehab property and I want to mm -hmm. do a two or three K mm -hmm. loan. All this grand shit, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I want to do short great. sales. I want to do short sales. I want to go to the auction. I want to go exactly. to the courthouse, right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> you have a contractor. Mm -hmm. No, what's a contractor? Right. Right? Exactly. People don't build a team. And, yeah. And I think that's, you know, the, the traditional way of home buying, I think, is flawed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people think they need to go out and, look, go to Westchester County or go to Long Island. Yes. Because the school districts right. are so much are so much better, right? Yeah. But they don't realize mm -hmm. you're paying that much more in taxes. Exactly. And they may not even have children. Right. Or they may have a child that's two years old. Yeah. That child is not going to go through the yeah. schools. Like, it doesn't make sense to yeah, go yeah, ahead yeah. And, and spend that much in taxes. So, yeah. you're recomm I always recommend, listen, buy multifamilies first. Mm -hmm. um, get rental income. Mm -hmm. Build that passive income. And buy in distressed areas mm -hmm. because... If your goal is to own property, you should never go buy your picket fence first. Right. You should always go and buy, go live in the hood, like you said. Yeah, live yeah, in your yeah. own neighborhoods because that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. It's true. And if you do it smart, you can move your way down from four units, three units, and then by the time you get to the one family, mm -hmm. your one family is already paid for by your tenants. The funny thing about that is that's still traditional, too. I mean, even now, one family, I know people who buy one families and they house hack. Right? Yeah. They rent every room. They rent nowadays you can rent a room, a couch, a closet, a garage, yeah, right? So it's 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 all about leverage and how much you can leverage that property. If you get a four bedroom, you're living in one or let's just say a three bedroom with a basement. You live in a basement and you rent out all the other three rooms. I mean, right now people are renting rooms. We're in a shared economy now. So people are not really able to afford an apartment by themselves. So they're renting rooms. In Brooklyn I have room rental so what about like co-ownership co mm -hmm. I, I know that's a big thing on the west <clears throat> coast right now it um, is it's so, a big thing in in europe really i mean okay. it's um so tell so, us about co-ownership like what's going on with that so my idea of you know if you can't purchase a property on your own you should join together which is why i quit my job i'm building a platform that's basically going to connect ideal partners to buy property together and and really make home ownership affordable and available for more people. And just like the story I told you about the restaurant worker purchasing a house mm -hmm. um, with the entire family, we need to think more community. Again, we're in a shared economy. Um, so if I owned, you know, you and I bought a two-family house in East New York. East New York is an area that's, you know, Absolutely. growing, even Brownsville that's growing, Absolutely. right? Crown so Heights, if I can't crazy. afford it now, 700000 800000 but you and I go in it together, so two-family, you and your family live upstairs, I live downstairs. Same thing like a rental, right? But both of us own shares in that, in that property, right? You own 50% of that property on a deed, I'm 50% owner of that property, we're paying paying that mortgage, we're building wealth over time. When East New York pops, right, you can take out that equity. You can now go buy the that big house with the white picket fence, right? 
Um, but then don't sell your shares. Keep it because guess what? Real estate is leverage, right? You leverage that, you get that income from there, and maybe that can help fund the house that you're going to buy so let me with the ask. picket fence. So with the co-ownership, right? Let's just say we buy that two family, same example. Mm -hmm. I want to leave, but let's just say I want to. I, I don't want my shares no more. I want right. to take all my shares, liquidate. Like, how would that work? So the thing is, first of all, you have to have a co-ownership agreement. Okay, when things are bad, that's when people want to decide, oh, you're going to get this much. No, you need to decide those things up front. So all of the what ifs, all of the things that can happen, that's going to be in that agreement. Unfortunately, you now, still... Is this legal documentation? Or it's just... legal documentation. Okay. You're going to sit down with an attorney. You're going to have contracts. Can you record And you're going to this? talk about, absolutely, you can okay. record it. You're going to have it, but... You know, um, when you go into recording, then you have, yeah. uh, well, then you go a little deeper, like blockchain <laughs> technology, which I'm not going to get into today. Yeah, yeah, it's too, that's but too complicated. It's too complicated. But there are ways that people can protect themselves. So if something happens, then, you know, they'll have that in a contract written down in agreement mm -hmm. um, that's going to talk about what that exit strategy looks like. Yeah, I like that. And I yeah. think the comments like that, too. A lot of people saying they love that, that, that co-ownership. I think that's, you know, like you said, we see a lot of communities that, that do co-ownership. Mm -hmm. You can go through certain neighborhoods and you'll see like 20 families live in one big it's ass true. house. It's true. Right? And sometimes it won't even be families. The platform that, that I'm creating is called Pair Gap, PairGap.com. Um, plug so that, plug that. <laughs> Say that again. Say that loud so they can hear you. P -A -I -R -G -A -P .com. Okay. Um, and you can go with a stranger. So it's like a dating site, right? You go online, you talk about your personal likes, your pet peeves, and then it goes into a pre-qualification where you have your income, assets, credit, and the neighborhood you want to live in. And then that algorithm will match you with like people. So, you know, normally when you buy with a family member, there's an emotional attachment to that. So some people want to get away from that emotional attachment and just be strictly business and then people have angst about that they're like oh well I don't want to you know I don't want to have to manage somebody else or tenants or things like that but then they go to work every day right yeah. and then they work for somebody else and deal with that headache right but this is your own business you're running it like a business so you have to really think more of an investment entrepreneurship um, and if you can't buy on your own then you need to be able to join together with someone else to still get a piece of it because if you don't if you wait until you can accumulate the funds to purchase then you may be priced out yeah especially here it may be too York. late it may be too yeah, late you gotta hurry up interest rates may go up prices are going up new york is just like so fucking crazy now with crazy. these prices I, I see these deals come across my desk i'm like yo this is just crazy i know it's ridiculous and, and people just can't afford it they can't so i think the co-ownership thing that's coming from europe i know they're doing it out on the west coast yes. i mean i think that's going to be probably the new wave yeah it will years. be because people need to come together yeah and, and buy property together i tell people all the time if you got twenty thousand, you got a friend they got twenty, right. thirty thousand. Put your money together, go buy a multi. That's it. And that exit strategy will really, you know, um, I, I guess you can get over all of that angst by having that exit strategy in place that's gonna protect you. I think that's the major key of it. Yeah, that's it, what it, people it, think it, about the it, first it, thing they the think first about. Thing, is that. that's when, as you're speaking about it, yeah. all I'm thinking is like if I wanted to get the hell out of here, right? Yeah. And I wanted to get rid of done with them. I'm going to buy my single family, do whatever the hell I yeah. want. How do I get out of this? But it makes sense to have that exit strategy, legal document, and writing. Mm -hmm. No one, it's a contract. Right. It's a business. And it's shared, like people are afraid to share in home ownership, but we're sharing everything else. Who would have thought that we would share cars? Like, to me, you're the most vulnerable. You're driving. Yeah, Your back crazy. is turning. Oh, people the are whole behind Uber you. and Lyft thing is crazy to me because I still be like, damn, I'm in a stranger's car That's what right I'm now. saying. <laughs> and you with other and strangers. It's, and, and, it's, and it's normal. And his back is turned. That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah, and his back is turned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your back is turned. Yeah. And then even in homes, like people opening their homes to strangers. I had to change the way I thought about home ownership. The landlord was like the mean old lady coming in and the tenants would have pain in the ass, right? You could curse. Oh, I could curse? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I have to, you know, say, come, welcome. You know, I want you to have the best experience so you can tell your friends, you can tell your family, so you can come back, you know? It's totally different now. So we think we need to think about home ownership. It needs to change just like everything else in the world is changing. Repeat the website again because a couple people are saying the website. Paragap, P-A-I-R-G-A-P.com.
And I'm also going to, um, so in the next couple of weeks, I'll also be releasing my report on PearGap.com. So different neighborhoods I'll highlight every month. So you'll be able to go on the website, join a community. The entire website is all about education, everything mm -hmm. you need to know about home ownership. Um, and, and you can get that gen report there. Listen, I'm super excited about the gen report. I love the gen report. I read it every time you post it. Good. You guys need to go ahead and, and follow her. Make sure you're, you're tuning into the gen report. I posted it uh, like two weeks ago, I believe it was. It was about the, the purple line and, and, and the DMV. Oh, yeah. Check um, that one out. That wasn't me. That was all Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> I just copy and pasted what she posted and, and put it out there. And you yeah. guys were all in the comments. You was engaged. I mean, I love your reporting. So, Thank you. Talk, tell us one final word about Kensington. Let's wrap up the gym report segment yep. with, with Nikki Merck. All right. Tell us Kensington. Why should we invest in there? You should invest in Kensington because that area is exploding and you need to hurry up. So now East Kensington is a little pricey now. I told you it went up to 480. Um, if you go across the bridge, and I don't know if that if that's the west side, but you, you'll know if, if you're familiar with Philly, um, across the train tracks um, is the other side of Kensington. And okay. that area is... I don't like the way that sounds, across the train tracks. Well, uh, uh, if you're investing early and you're buy and hold and, and you're really in it for the long haul, um, you are going to have to go through some neighborhood changes, right? So you, then you have to decide, am I buying and am I going to live there and live through the changes? Mm -hmm. um, or am I just going to buy and just hold on to it? So, um, but if you buy there and hold on to it, you'll definitely be in a good place within the next five years. I guarantee that. I like that. I like yeah. that. So listen, tell them how to find you again. So Nikki Merck, N-I-K-K-I-M-E-R-K on Instagram. And Pear Gap is P-A-I-R-G-A-P.com. All right, so we got a couple questions. So De Delandra, she wants to know what other areas of Philly are, are up and coming? So I've been paying attention to West Philly, Southwest Philly, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically Southwest Philly. Um, I've been in that area a lot. It's a um, huge um, African community, and um, there's a lot of good things going on in, in Southwest Philadelphia. There's a lot. There's access to transportation to Center City again. Okay. Um, I know Bertram Gardens, they're about to tear that. What's that? Um, Say that again. Housing Bert Bertram, project. Bertram Gardens. Yeah, they're they're tearing that housing project down, and they're building this 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 housing development. It's not going to be um, low income housing anymore, but it's right near the water, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure eventually they're going to have some transportation, some ferry transportation to the city. Um, but that area is really um, one to look look out for. Mm. Yeah. That's a gem. Do some do some uh some research. Go on that Philadelphia Planning Department. Again, they have that plan out until twenty twenty three. So you'll be able to see everything that they're planning. <laughs> People are um, mad that you're telling them all the gems. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. Like, why? They're like, they're like, shh, don't tell them. <laughs> there's, a, there's enough for everybody. There's enough for everybody. And and the thing about real estate is is people are scared. And, you know, you can give them the information all day, but only only the people that are not afraid to. to yeah, you know, that's why I tell people all the time. It doesn't matter what you tell people. It doesn't matter. You can sit here and, and go on the top of the building and have like the loudest horn ever and yell exactly. to people what to do and they still won't do they it. They still won't do 90 it. 90% of the people won't execute. Yeah. And it's exactly. all good. It's, it's fear and we just have to get over that. And every investment, there's a risk. So you got to be willing to take the risk. What about the Frankfurt area? Frankfurt area? Mm -hmm. I mean,. Kensington, I know Frankfurt Avenue. Okay. Um, so it's gonna spill over to that area, but it's gonna take some time. Um, so you can buy something there now, but again, you need to identify how far away it is from that transportation. So anything around that L train, you're gonna be good. You know, walking distance from the L train. But once you get further out where you'll have to drive, um, then, you know, you it may not turn over as quickly as something that's close to transportation. So, so I'm glad you said transportation, mm -hmm. right? That just thought, brought me back to an earlier thought I had. What about the folks that live and work in New York, mm -hmm. right, but are completely priced out, they want to move to Philly. That's two still, hours. But they still want to commute back to New York. I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of trains that go back and forth between Philly and New York. Is Would you recommend 
somebody moving there as a primary residence. To, to I would own. say primary resident. I mean, I, I mean, there's job opportunities in Philadelphia. I, I wouldn't work in New York and, and commute and to commute. Philadelphia. So I, just, would, I would look at the opportunities in Philadelphia. It's a great city. It's great people. Like, I just, I honestly, that's my second home. And I never thought I would get out of it. I'm a true New Yorker, but Philly is, Philly is. Philly yeah. is it. Philly is it. Philly is it? Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of Philly. Johns in Philly. There's a lot that's of Johns a, in Philly. That's, a Philly word. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Philly language. Yeah, you've been in Philly for yeah. a long, for a while now. I, I like Philly though. Yeah, yeah no, nah, Philly is good, man. Like I said, when I go out to Philly, it reminds me of um, Brooklyn. Yes. You know, I, yes. I, I love it. Got and my... Philly people are real. Like yeah, they, they are real. Like they will tell you what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. They are real. Nothing but love for my people in Philly. Um, shout out to Philly. Shout out shout out to Philly. <laughs> shout out to my man, real estate coach Carter, my man Malik. Shout out to Aisha, all my people um, in, in Philly. I'm trying to see if we got a couple more couple more questions. It looks like they're just all talking to each other in the comments. <laughs> so listen, I don't want, I know we got, we're running on time right here. We ran a little bit late. So you got any final parting words for the audience? Tell them what's coming next for you. How to find you again because we need to make sure that people who are going to watch this a month from now yeah know where to find you so any parting words i would just say stay tuned to paragap.com you know that my web platform is really going to help people um get rid of that angst of home ownership and really make home ownership available and affordable for more people um so paragap.com and you know pay attention to my instagram because i'm going to be giving you tips there um, but one thing I would say is just don't be afraid of home ownership. Just jump in, right? And think of it as an investment and just know that with every investment there's risk. But if you're not doing it, you'll never know, you know, what you missed out on. So the Agreed. biggest risk is not taking a chance. Agreed. 100% agreed. Listen, Nikki Merck is my homie. She's my peoples. This will not be the last time you see her. She's going to come back again probably next month and drop some more gems about a different neighborhood because that's what she does. And, and send um, me what neighborhood you want to. Yeah, you know what? Send us, send Nikki and send myself whatever neighborhoods you're interested in investing in and we'll do the analytics. We'll break it all down for you guys and then we'll probably talk about it the next time she yeah. comes in next month. Yeah, next is Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. No, it's Baltimore. Baltimore? Yeah. Okay, you there we go. You can't pronounce the T. We're going to talk about the Y then. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about the Y. I gotta love B more. Um, shout out to all my people in Maryland, Baltimore area. So, everybody give it up to Nikki Merck. Make sure you go follow her and um, you already know what it is. All Thank right. you. All right, Matt. It's good seeing you. Oh, I don't give dap. I give hugs. Like. But I got to give you dap on camera, too. All right. Good seeing you, Nick. Thank you. All right, guys. So that was, you can go through. Fuck it. Walk through. No, no, just walk through. It don't matter. This is live and it's <laughs> raw, so it don't even matter. Right? That was good. Lots of gems. Lots of gems, Nikki. Thank you. No, lots of gems. All right. So we're going to go to part two. Of this conversation, okay, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, they they talking about Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, Baltimore's gonna be lit. All right, so let's go on to part two. You about to bounce, or you or you hanging out? I'll hang out. Pop pop a cup and have a have a <laughs> pop a cup, right? All right, so let's go to let's go to part two. I'm going to bring on. I'm not much of this bringing on and long introductions. Nadera, why don't you come on on? Welcome to the ranch and gents. So y'all give it up for Nadera. We're just walking across. Just walking across because we're going to keep right, it real right. funky and real raw here. What's up, Nadera? What's up, Matt? How are Hi, you? Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so don't pay attention I'm to this. I'm trying not right? to. <laughs> so this is just for me to, are they throwing the gems in the comments? Yes, I like that. All right, so Nadera. Yes. I've known Nadera since junior high school. So we reconnected recently at a closing. Yes, we did. It wasn't my closing. <laughs> my girl, Crystal Young, the attorney on that closing, it was right down the hall from me. Mm -hmm. And she came and said, Matt, you need to meet Nadera. I said, Crystal, I'm busy. I got things to do. <laughs> she said, no, I'm telling you, you need to meet her. And then I come in there, and then you said, I know you. Exactly. And I said, you know me. She said, yeah, we went to junior high school. I remember everybody. <laughs> I said, how the hell you remember that? I'm the one that everyone texts. Mm -hmm. They sneak pictures of people. 
and say, who is this? Let me know their name before they come over here. Wow. That's me. That's you. That's me. So once you told me who you was and I had to do some on back and research, I'm like, oh shit, I do know her. <laughs> I'm like, that's crazy. And you're a broker. So as we reconnect and we got to speaking, you told me you were closing a lot of deals with NACA. Over 30 in the last two years. So you've closed over 30 NACA deals. Now, first of all, tell, introduce yourself to my audience. Who are you? What do you do for a living? First and first. Hello, everybody. My name is Nadira Taylor, and I am the owner, along with my husband, of Diamond Mine Real Estate. We're located in West Hempstead. We deal primarily with Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau County, Suffolk County. However, depending on the agent, we are willing to take the trip further up north in New York only at the moment. My background is property management and compliance, okay. and I decided to quit my job three years ago mm -hmm. to, to do this full time. Oh, Crystal's on the check-in, too. What's up, Crystal? Hi, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you, you decided to go full-time three years ago. Yes. What made you... Now, you're a NACA ref, um, preferred real estate broker. Yes, I am. A NACA referral agent. What in God's green earth made you decide to w work with NACA? Well, I purchased my house with NACA about eight years ago. Okay. And so tell us your experience. My experience with NACA as I was going through the program was very frustrating. Okay. However, um, I was able to meet a lot of the key players during that time. I met all of the counselors. I met the district manager, the supervisors, and we were able to finish the deal. My time was frustrating only because I kind of pulled the cart before the horse. Okay. I started looking for a house before I was approved. The same things that I tell people not to do. And it gets on my nerves when they, when and they do it. And you was doing it. it. That's, that's so you it. was your own worst client. I was my own worst client. Shit happens. <laughs> exactly. But it's not until you purchase your house with NACA and you're living next door to people that are paying 3000 4000 And about eight years ago, that's also when they were doing double mortgages. Yeah. And people 80, were... 20s. Yeah, yeah. And people were getting into mortgages that they couldn't afford, that they were losing six months after they purchased the home. Is where NACA became the best thing since sliced bread. Okay. And since then, I've had them at my church either monthly, bi-monthly, just doing seminars over the last eight years to bring more people into the program. That's awesome. So now, when you purchased your home with NACA, you said it was it was painful, right? Yes, but it was. there was a rainbow. Definitely. That rainbow was your interest rate. My interest rate was 1.6. 1.6%. Yes. No PMI. No PMI. 30-year fix. 30-year fix. Jeez. I've actually been successful with someone who purchased about six weeks ago. Uh -huh. They bought their interest rate all the way down to 0 0.2%. <laughs> 0 0.2. That sounds crazy. But it, it's real. All right. So let's get let's get to the because I get a, I get like a thousand questions a week about this NACA program, ahead, right? Shoot. And I tell people all the time, listen. I hear good and bad things. The good things, like you just said, the interest rate. Mm -hmm. The bad things is the pain, right? right? So that's why I wanted, I'm so happy we reconnected and you told me your experience with NACA because I really want someone who's an expert and, and you've been through it your own and mm -hmm. you're helping so many people go through the process. And for as many people you've helped, there's a lot of people you haven't helped that went through the process Correct. as well. So it's probably triple the amount of people that you helped through the process. So you're an expert. You, you know the program like the back so. of your hand, yes. right? So tell us, someone going for NACA, what's step one? Step one is that what everyone does is they read NACA's advertisement. Mm -hmm. And it's very much true. You don't pay any appraisal fees. You don't pay any closing costs. You don't pay any attorney fees. The only thing that you are responsible for is your inspection fees. But after, home inspections, appraisals. No, just home inspections. Just, just home Knock, inspections. NACA okay. covers everything else. Okay. So once people hear that, then everyone takes off running. I think what people also need to realize, the key component, is that you still need to have money saved. You still need to save your money. The okay. reason being is you want to take advantage of the program, and that's buying your interest rate down. Okay. If you don't do that, the way that NACA does it, they approve you for affordability. They don't really approve you for a purchase amount. They so, will never so say. So let's do a let's do a deep dive into that, right? Go ahead. Before we get to the buying down, right? So you said they approve because I want to, so people can understand when they're watching this and replaying this. Like when you say approve, because it's different. We look at DTIs, mm -hmm. right? Is NACA looking at your DTI? They are looking at your DTI when you go 
through your initial approval phase. Okay. Right? And what's that initial approval phase look like? Speaking with a counselor? Speaking with a counselor. Okay. However, what I like to do is I get people right out of the seminars mm -hmm. and I'll counsel them before they go to the NACA appointment. This way they have everything that they need to know and whatever questions they have after the seminar, they're able to ask them and now they presented themselves with NACA with a package of everything that's put together. Very well put. Okay, so you have your whole NACA and it's a particular package. What documents do they need typically? Typically, they need your W-2s. They need tax transcripts. A lot of people miss that. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have access to a um, fax, a personal fax, then mm -hmm. you need to get that mailed. And we're talking with the government, so now you're talking two to four weeks. And people always make that mistake where they do the seminar and they're pumped, and they're like, you know what? I need, I need my appointment yesterday. I, I need my appointment, and I'm going to do the first one that they give me. I don't care. I went to a seminar on Saturday, and I'm going to take Tuesday's appointment. However, you take Tuesday's appointment, but you don't have everything that you need. You definitely need those tax transcripts. You know, we come from an era where everyone gets over. Yeah, so your everyone w gets over. You know, so your W-2s will say that you made 150000 However, once you went in and you amended them, you really only made 30000 after you yeah. do all of your deductions and everything So NACA's else. looking at everything. They're looking at all your expenses, even if you're a W-2 employee. Right. Well, Matt, you have to realize that NACA started to help people against predatory lending for the people who had double mortgages or mortgages that they couldn't afford. So they make sure that you dot all your I's and cross all your T's. So with that, they do. They, they tend to look at everything. But again, they're based on affordability. So they won't tell you, well, you know what, you're approved for 500000 and your taxes are $10,000. They'll run numbers for every house that you want to put an offer in to make sure that you can afford that house. Because, you know, we can't just say, well, in Baldwin, you're approved for 500000 However, you know, Baldwin on one block, taxes might be 12000 Yeah. The next block over is 14000 Yeah. And the block after that, because you're closer to the water and they know that you need flood insurance, now your tax is only 9000 mm. So everything is based on affordability, which is a monthly amount, not so much a purchase price. So they're not looking at, they're looking at, are they analyzing it based off of the gross income or their net income? They're, they're basing it off of the gross. However, if you're a city employee, a lot of city employees, they put their uniforms in their budget. Yeah. You know, they put a lot of things in their budget and it may hurt you in the end yeah. because this is still going according to your debt to income ratio. They want to make sure that you're able to purchase your house, afford your house and still live comfortably and not struggling. That's good. That's good. That's how we all should analyze loans when we're doing loans. Because there's a big difference between being eligible for a loan and being able to afford a loan. But in the life of social media, yeah. everybody wants the home Absolutely. and they want all the nice things. Absolutely. And if I struggle, I struggle as long as it looks nice when I post my pictures. Agreed. And Naka's not into that. Naka doesn't give a damn about that. Nah. No, 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 one no, so, no social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it shouldn't be. It's all about what you can get approved for. So it's good. They're doing their due diligence, right? Right. Now, so someone goes through the, their, their counseling, they go through this. Like, typically, how long does it take for someone to get approved for this NACA program? As long as you have all your paperwork together, mm -hmm. you can get approved within seven to ten days. But you must have all of your paperwork together. That's why we like to counsel people immediately after the seminars. Let them take in, you know, the four hours that, you know, they received all the information and say, hey, listen, what NACA likes to do is everyone wants a monthly mortgage of $2,500. And NACA approves people based on how much you were paying your rent. So if you have rent of $1,500 and you're able to prove over the last 12 months that you were paying your rent on time for 12 months, then you're automatically approved for a mortgage of fifteen hundred. That has to include your taxes and also your insurance. Where the hell are they finding a mortgage in New York for fifteen hundred dollars? If you with escrow. But just listen, if you have the funds mm -hmm. to Or is that just an example? That's just an example. Okay. However, we have helped people who were only approved for fifteen hundred and couldn't get approved for more, but they did have the funds to buy the interest rate all the way down to get them to that amount. But just using fifteen hundred as the example and you know that your salary calls for you to pay twenty five hundred and you can handle it, you need to show them that you are able to save a thousand dollars a month on top of your fifteen hundred rent, on top of your car note, on top of you doing whatever it is that you have to do for your children, all of your day to day duties, 
and they want to see that bank statement growing a thousand dollars every month before they say you know what we're going to approve her for twenty five hundred wow so they're looking at your savings so they're looking at your rent your current rental payment correct as long as you have, rent is one thing naka does not play with and they want it to a management company they want it from a management company if you're paying your so if you rent from me and i don't have a management company and you're, you're paying, paying cash cash check quick pay whatever but it's, i'm not a management company i'm just a regular person so so let me so let me tell you how to get through that okay if that's a lot like, of strategy <laughs> a lot of landlords only want you to do cash Correct. You know, you have to live somewhere. You can't get around that. So what I suggest you do, if your rent is $1,500 a month, and you know that when you take out the $1,500 a month for your rent, however, you also need $100 to give to your child for a senior trip, and you also need $200 for groceries, do not take out the $1,800 together. Take out the $1,500, and then you take out the $300 separately. So that this way you're showing, okay, on the fifth of every month, I'm taking $1,500 out and I'm giving that to my landlord. And the same thing with Cash App, Zelle, or whatever the case is. If you're doing Cash App, make sure that you Cash App the same person. You Zelle the same person. So that this way you're showing over the last, okay. yes, over the last 12 months, this is what I did. If you're paying John Doe, Jane Doe, you go to your bank, what they'll do is they'll print out last 12 months of all the checks paid to, to Jane Doe. Correct. So, NACA, document, document, document. Yes. They, they don't want to hear you're living for free with your parents. If you're living for free with your parents and you want a $2,000 a month mortgage, then you need to start saving $2,000 a month. Okay. And you need to do that for you. So, year. either or. So, Correct. either if you're living at home, if you want $3,000 a month, show that you're able to save $3,000 a month, or you're paying currently rent and saving a combination of the two right correct correct and they need to document it for 12 months so someone looking in 2019 that's hearing this information and if they haven't been doing what you're suggesting then they'll probably will get declined by NACA yes one thing you can not accept letters for almost everything but they don't play with the rent and we have to again go back to how it originated and that was to stop people or protect people against predatory lending. Okay. So now that we know this information and we have it, we can't be as mad when they make sure that we dot all our I's and cross all of our T's. Okay. Definitely can't be mad at that. Listen, they're trying to protect and make sure you can afford the house and not foreclose. So right. I mean, I, I commend them for that. And as long as your credit score is a 620 and above, then you automatically start off at the national interest rate. Today, the national interest rate is 3.5. So national, and they're comparing that to FHA. Correct. So the national FHA rate, three and a half percent, right? NACA is using that same three and a half percent, right? As right. as their starting rate, as long as you can document your rent, mm -hmm. along with your document your income, your your bank statements, all that good stuff. If you exactly. Meet the, you meet that documentation. You have a six twenty score. You can you qualify for whatever the national rate is that day. That's what that's what you qualify. That's for. That's what you qualify for. Now. Is this 100% financing? Do you have to pay a down payment? Do you have to pay closing costs? How does that work? It is 100% financing. Okay. Um, what everyone also needs to understand is that in order, when you have NACA, like most programs, there's a negative connotation that comes with programs. Yes. There's a lot of negative connotation about NACA program. Right. So what I would tell people from my experience is that you still have to put down your 3.5% or more in order for you to be competitive on an offer. Correct. So what NACA, and for you guys, just so you understand, although NACA is saying we'll give you 100% financing, doesn't mean a seller will accept that at contract. The seller will still want a good faith deposit exactly. when, when you're signing the contract. So you still need to have money. You can't just go and say, hey, I have no money. Right. I have and a I job think, and, and I, think I can improve. And I think when some people hear program, that's what they think. Okay, okay well, I'm going through NACA. I don't, need, I don't need to have any money to move forward. And that's not true. And again, we're living in New York. A lot of us want to purchase in Long Island. When you purchase in Long Island, your taxes are a lot higher. Absolutely. However, if you're purchasing in the boroughs, the cost of the houses are higher than your taxes, but it all still averages out to about the same. So let's say a house in Queens, on the low side, what we're we talking like four seventy five. Four seventy five five. Five hundred. For a fixer. Yeah, taxes what now forty five hundred. Forty five to five. You're talking with no money down with your taxes and your insurance included. You're looking at twenty seven to twenty nine hundred a month. Correct. But you're only approved for twenty five hundred a month. So how do you get to the twenty five hundred? How do you get from twenty nine to twenty five? 
How do you win that? And you do that by buying down your interest rate. So that's where the money needs to come so in. So explain, so so for the people who don't understand what buying down your interest rates mean, explain, go into detail about that. Buying down your interest rate brings your interest rate lower. So as of right now, again, you're at 3.5%. So what you would do is you'll buy your interest rate down to, let's say, 2%. And at 2%, now makes your monthly payment twenty five hundred, and that's how you get approved for NACA. And every time you go to put an offer on a house, NACA will run numbers for every house. You're not getting a general approval as you would from uh, Chase or Wells Fargo or any other bank where you can use that to shop around until it expires. Mm -hmm. You must get a qualification letter or approval per house because they want to make sure that you're able to afford each and every house that you go to put an offer in on. The good news is that. If you're putting down three and a half percent of, you know, on house ABC at you know XYZ Drive, and you need fifteen thousand down to for your three and a half percent, but you need twenty five thousand to buy your interest rate down. You don't need fifteen thousand on top of the twenty five thousand. The fifteen thousand is inclusive of the twenty five thousand. Wow, that's crazy. It is. That's why I say. I mean, it works. I I explained Naka maybe. 100 times a week. Yeah. And like I said, I, I come from big corporations like Rose Associates, Thor Equity. Mm -hmm. And I've been in, you know, director of compliance. I've been in positions to where I have the president's ear. And when I get to talking about NACA or whatever the case is, they all say the same thing. No, there has to be a balloon payment somewhere. Yeah. Let me let me see your HUD statements. Let me yeah. do this. And I've had people comb through it, you know, and it it works. I mean, it's... It's just like anything else. With nothing in life is free. I know nothing was given to me. Everything that I have, I had to work hard for it. And knock is the same thing. So as long as you keep your paperwork together and you fight for your house, mm -hmm. then you're able to get it. Where people get discouraged is when they either do like me and pull the cart before the, the yeah. horse, or they don't keep up with their paperwork and they feel like someone's just going to hand them down a house. Someone else is responsible to do it. You have to do it yourself. Absolutely. I agree with that. So let me ask you this. Is NACA nationwide? NACA is nationwide. I have a nephew who just purchased in Virginia. Okay. I have a friend who just purchased in South Carolina. I have a best friend who's an agent in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and she has her first NACA client. NACA is national. Now, what about multifamilies? Can you buy multifamilies with NACA? Yes, you can. You can go to a fourplex, a four unit yes, with, you can. with NACA? With NACA. Are there any particular that's, that's restrictions how, with that? No, that's only how some people are able to afford it. You know, some people, everyone wants the American dream, but not everyone can afford it. Okay. So the only way that they're going to get the house that they want is if they get a two family because they need the rental income. And, and, and then they'll offer 100% financing. 100% financing. No on PMI. No PMI. Okay. On multifamily as well. And closing costs. And closing costs. With a multifamily. With a multifamily. Just keep in mind, though, and this is for the people who aren't saving right now and they do want a multifamily, you still should pay 3.5% of the purchase price. So if you're, On contract. On contract. So if your multifamily is $700,000, 800000 mm -hmm. then you need 3.5% of that. And that's where I see there's a lot of bumps in the road. Everyone wants the higher price house, but they don't have the funds to, to cover it. But why should, if it's 100% financing, mm -hmm. right? Just so, because I understand it, right? I just want to clear because I can hear the questions right now, right? Okay. At one breath, we're saying it's 100% financing plus no closing costs, but you're saying we need 3.5%. We understand it's for the contract. Right. You right? must, some people don't, depending on how much you approve for, we get people that approve for $2,900, mm -hmm. $3,000. They don't need that 3.5%. So what they do is they put it on a contract um, signing so that they can tell the seller, hey, listen, even though I have this program, I'm serious. I really want the house. Okay. And what will happen is at closing, if they're in Long Island, what are we, four months in Nassau County? Six, yeah, taxes. Are taxes. Or whatever. You know, so that earnest deposit that you just put down will mm -hmm. go towards that. It okay. can go towards your insurance. You have to pay your homeowner's insurance for the year prior. Or it can go down to buying down, buying interest, down your interest rate. Now, let me ask you a question, right? So... That down payment, you'll use that entire money. Let's just say they're paying 100% of closing costs, 100% mm -hmm. financing. Now they want to buy down their interest rate. Now they can use that entire money, 20000 30000 50000 whatever it is, to buy down their interest rate. Correct. Damn, that shit is crazy. My interest rate is 1.6. 
That 1.6 sound, like, I'm kind of jealous of that right now. <laughs> but but imagine working with people who have purchased their interest rate down to 0.5% or 0.2%. Like, I for, thir- for 30 years? I want to do over. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit, I want to do over too. Like, for 30 years, but, 1.6. Right. Principal and interest. Right. No balloon payments. No balloon payments. All right, so however, let's, though, okay, however, see, not, there's always a fucking butt, right? No, however. listen, listen, I just want everyone to know NACA is not a first time home buyers program. Okay. Any you you could have had five houses in the past and wanted to purchase again. So, what if you currently own the property? That's that's the caveat. Okay, you need to sell it. Um, the purchase of your property with NACA is contingent on the sale of your current house because they want to make sure that people aren't investing, people aren't wholesaling. You know, this is primary residence home. Right. The program is for people who need it. But they don't discriminate. So there's no income cap on it. However, there is a cap when you buy your interest rate down. So if you make eighty one percent or over the med- the national medium income, then you're only able to buy your interest rate down one point two five percent. So today we're at what three point five. Uh huh. So you buy. Two and a quarter. Correct. Wait a minute. So repeat. Wait, hold on. And this was a change you was telling me that just happened this Monday. Is, this is most recent. So this just happened this past Monday. They changed it to where you can only buy down your interest rate a point and a quarter if you're. No, 80, no, no. One point two five percent. One point two five percent. You can buy it down. That's that's where you, that's if, where you cap that. If you make eighty one percent and above the median income. However, if you make 80% or and lower. below, uh-huh. then you're able to buy your interest rate all the way down to 0.187. How many points is that, though? Listen, I'm the broker. I'm not the man. <laughs> <laughs> it, depends, it depends on the day. So it depends on the day, but it can be like five points. Yes, it can. So if you're buying a half a million dollar loan or a $600,000 house, mm-hmm. that can get pretty pricey. But you'll have a 0% interest rate. Right. Shit. And the current bank for NACA is Bank of America. Mm-hmm. I have Citibank. It was and, Citibank and these are all conventional mortgages, too. All conventional. All conventional mortgages. What is the occupancy requirement for NACA loans? They, they do want you to be on occupied. For, for how five long? Years. For five years? Yes. So occupancy for five years. What happens if you try to move out? Or you try to sell, or you try to refinance for whatever good God but why reason. Why would you want to refinance what if, if you, you're already? So let's. Like look, how much lower can you go? Look, think, all right. So think about this, right? You have a one point six on your 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 home, mm-hmm. right? You purchased it eight years ago, right? So now you have five hundred thousand in equity because the market is just absolutely insane right now. Mm-hmm. Do they penalize you if you want to take out a home equity line of credit? No, no, they don't. So there's no penalty. There's nothing you have to pay back. What no, if you NACA, s- holds, <clears throat> NACA holds the first lien. NACA holds the first lien. Which is a soft one. A soft lien. And mm-hmm. then Bank of America or Citibank will be... The, the, they're, so they're more like, NACA's more like a junior lien. Correct. <clears throat> and then Bank of America or Citibank, whoever their, their preferred services at that time is the first lien. Yes, it is. Now, with the soft lien that NACA is or the junior lien... Let's just say if you wanted to sell it in less than five years, do you have to pay them back? No, you can, you can sell it in less than five years. That's not an issue. They just want you to live in your home. They want you, if you're going to take advantage of the program, it's because either other programs turned you away mm-hmm. or, you know, this was the best deal for you and your family. Okay. Can, can, can you use down payment assistance on top of the NACA program? Yes, they can. You just have to keep in mind that there's a <coughs> lot of, there's a lot of programs out there that don't want 100% financing. Okay. So as you're looking and you're Googling grants or whatever the case is, just make sure to pick up the phone and say, hey, listen, do you work with 100% financing? Because that's where people, they get frustrated as well. Because now they just want to, they didn't ask any questions. They went ahead, they were approved for the grant. And some people, especially in Suffolk County, they're approved for 25000 Suffolk County is paying people, giving people 25000 to come back out there. Mm. And some of them are incompatible with loans that are 100% financing. But why? <clears throat> that I'm not sure. I guess what they want people to do is they want they still want people to use some of their own money. They, I guess they're trying to do the the checks and balance that NACA is doing to make sure that you have funds to buy your you know your own rate. But we also get some sellers who or brokers or sellers attorneys that say, hey, listen, we're not comfortable with 100% financing. You know what? I'm glad you brought that up because from what I see just in my career, right, mm-hmm. when I when I have someone who's been through the NACA program su- successfully, 
Um, some t- it doesn't take seven days for most of them. Most, <laughs> most of them it may take them six months, eight months, or however long it takes them, right? To go through, they, they get approved. They go through all of that, mm-hmm. that pain. Yes. Now they go out to the marketplace, which the marketplace doesn't give a goddamn about NACA, HPD, Sony May, none of these programs, right? Sellers want their money, period, point That's bank. It. They want the best offer. What is the, what is the downfall of being a NACA approved buyer in today's market, and we're only going to speak about New York because we can't speak nationwide because right. you're not a broker nationwide. Correct. So we're going to speak about your experience as a high producing broker owner here in New York City. What is your experience with your NACA clients I think in the free market? In the free market, some of it also has have to do with your representation. Okay. So now Diamond Mine Real Estate has built, you know, a niche in real estate as we do a lot of knock loans and we're able to close deals a lot sooner than some other people. So one, it's about your representation. Two, it's about don't just, if you have enough funds, if you need $30,000 to buy your interest rate down, put 25000 on contract signing because now you're making yourself more appealing. Okay, so even though they have the program, they're willing to put 25000 down on contract signing. We like them. Mm. Because our other offers are three and a half percent. Same thing. You know, have your have your representation pull comps in the area. If a house is listed at four fifty, and you know that other houses in the area are selling for five hundred, maybe four ninety five, put an offer in for five for four sixty if you can afford to do so. But I will always say, if you, if you have to put thirty thousand, forty thousand to buy your interest rate down. Up the annual on your good faith deposit. So, all right. So, I'm, I'm glad we, we, we're talking about this. Now, I'm a I'm a seller, right? Mm-hmm. Your buyer is a NACA buyer. Yes. Joe Blow Schmo over here buys FHA. You got the same down payment. You got pretty much the same terms and condition. But Joe Blow Schmo is using local mortgage company mm-hmm. that is known for closing deals in two to three weeks. And me as a seller, I'm, I want to get the hell out of my house, right? Right. And I'm going against the NACA buyer. What's the turnaround time? Can can the, these NACA loans close as fast Thank as a local mortgage guy or woman doing the deal? Like, you know, we can close loans in two to three weeks, maybe sooner in most cases without no red tape. Can can the NACA program deliver those results for home sellers as well? Well, now we're at a point where NACA is doing a lot better than wh- where they were at okay. when, when I was going through NACA. So NACA is able to close loans in 28 days. I think a lot of the, the slowdown now is the actual member. Because now, when it comes time to do a bank application, you have 24 to 48 hours to do that bank application. So as soon as you get accepted offer, then your representation should be someone who's worked with NACA before. And they need to tell you, okay, these are the next steps. You're going to get an email today that says you should come in tomorrow to do your bank app. Once you do that, then you go through the underwriting um, process again just to make sure that nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. As long as nothing has changed, then you're good to go. Or a lot of people, they'll upload all of their documents into NACA six Mm -hmm. months ago and won't won't do it anymore. So now that you're doing the bank application, you have six months worth of documents that you now need to catch up on. And you don't bring all of them to your bank application, so now you need to come back. So -hmm. now you come back next week. You can't keep taking off from your job like that, so when do you go? Now you're two weeks behind on your bank application. So it all depends on the member. You need, again, this is you needing to fight for your house. That means that you need to continue to upkeep your documents. You know, if the year's changing, now that's new W-2s. That's new uh, tax transcripts. Here's my pay stubs. Here's my bank statements. My accounts are still growing. Or what people are also doing is they're playing with money. So they say, well, I save $1,000 a month. And what NACA does is, okay, Actually, you know what? No, you don't. Mm-hmm. You put a thousand in there, but now you go back and you spend five hundred yeah. here, and you spend three hundred here. And so, so NAC is paying attention to all of that. Yes, they are. So really, you only save two hundred, and you no longer qualify for this house. So wait a minute. So they approve for NACA. Let's just say January first. Mm-hmm. Now, when they get approved for NACA, is there a time frame that they have to close on a property after approval? Well, usually they used to give you 90 days. They don't, they don't do that anymore. Okay. So you go out there, you, you, know, you look for your house, because now they know that for some people it takes six months. But within that six months, you have access to your web files, your responsibility to so continue. So every month? Just continue to upkeep your documents. So they have to 
so all right they they prove they got everything done that they, they are shopping for their home they mm -hmm. find a home june 1st but now they've been approved from naca in january mm -hmm. so now they have to update four or five months of documentation bank statements pay stubs and it has to go back to naca for review that's only when you're at your bank application what okay. they'll do is so if you're approved for 2500 with naca in january mm -hmm. and we find a house in may or june they're going to give me a qualification letter based on your January approval. So that's at twenty five hundred. But over the last three months, you done turned forty, so you done balled out. You had a birthday party. So you can't you know, spend. You, no. you can't do nothing. No. So. Once you once you say eight hundred is my payment shock, or thousand dollars is my payment shock, and this is how much I want my monthly payment to be, you have to keep that up until you close. With all right. Go. So for all my NACA people, that was a gem for you guys, right? If you're looking to go NACA. Once you get approved, it doesn't mean go fucking party in Dubai At all. or go to Australia. Now or, you have to, you have to like, save double. Or you buy have Chanel to save bags and, and all this Chanel. other good stuff, right? So you still have to, whatever got you approved, you have to maintain that. Until closing. Until closing because now that can delay, if I'm, re if I'm hearing you yes, correctly. Yes, that is true. That can delay your entire time frame. Right. So me as a home seller, why the hell would I want to accept somebody like that if I know they still got to go back to NACA? And so if I, if you show me your approval you, letter from you NACA. Want an honest, you want an honest yeah, answer? Yeah, keep it 100. An honest answer, the reason why I think you should choose NACA mm -hmm. over someone else. And I'm not saying the people that you give loans no. to. But let's just say. Even some, if it was the people I give loans to. Let's just say someone them. else. What they tend to do is their approval is based on the information that was given to them. Most people do approvals like water. You don't know who done took someone else's approval, changed the name, and did everything else. Yeah. With NACA, NACA is running numbers before they give you a qualification letter or in the real world, an approval letter. They run the numbers. Now, this is underwriting. Underwriting runs the numbers. NACA's on, underwriting. NACA's underwriting with Bank of America. Okay. They run the numbers on this particular house and say, here, you can afford this house. So now there's no backdrop. There's there's nothing else there's so, nothing else to so do. So Bank of America underwriting will get involved prior to you getting into yes. contract. So they'll do an upfront underwrite, Bank yes. of America. Yes, they will. How long does that upfront up so I'm done with NACA, boom, 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 yahoo, I pass, right? I got NACA money. Now mm -hmm. Bank of America I'm gonna do my loan application. I can do that immediately, get pre underwritten upfront. For, as as you as you seek a qualification letter yeah. for a house, yes. Yeah, because now I'm doing that. I wanna go buy a house now. I didn't go through eight months of pain just to mm -hmm. sit on my on my ass and do nothing. Right? Exactly. So now I go to Bank of America. How long does it take for Bank of America to approve me for a mortgage with a um, for, like an upfront loan commitment? Uh, up front, okay, so it's not a it's not an upfront loan commitment. Okay. What they do is they just run the numbers to make sure. Okay, fine. You want to put three offers in this weekend? You only qualify for two of the houses at the amount that so you Bank want. So America want to know the homes. Yes, they do. So that's part of the NACA requirement that they can't make an offer unless that Bank of America NACA certified loan Correct. officer. Reviews one, two, three Main Street, four, five, six Larry Street, Correct. so forth, so forth. It says this, this works, this works, this doesn't work, and then you, as the broker, you can only take them to the two that works and not the third one. Correct. And again, this is based on representation. So in our office, we make sure that everyone mm -hmm. continues with the upkeep of their files. So as a seller, you would feel more comfortable because we've already gone through the underwriting process. Mm -hmm. So now we're able to close on loans just as quick as anyone else. And we don't find, like we see it all the time while we're looking on MLS. Back on the market, couldn't obtain financing. Back on the market, you know, this happened, that happened. Yeah. And that's because pre-approvals are, are given out like water. Yeah. And people are sharing. Pre approvals are garbage. Yeah, and people are sharing them. So yeah. the seller really doesn't know like what's, what's real and what's, what's fake. what. Yeah. I mean, you can say, okay, I have a pre approval from this bank that's been known in the neighborhood to be, and you never even step foot in the bank. You got it from your cousin. Yeah. And you wanted the house, so you put an offer in, and then with a wish and a prayer, you're hoping that your documents and your information that you're now submitting to the bank will get you through. Whereas with NACA, they've already checked everything, and you qualify for this house. So now, all right, so we, we understand that. Mm -hmm. Now we have an accepted offer. Yes. Right? We beat out the FHA person. Yes. Right? Congratulations. Congratulations. What is my next step as a NACA buyer? What am I doing from that point on? 
from that point on. Once I have that accepted offer, I'll be, we're doing an we're inspection. Gonna, we know we're doing home inspection mm -hmm. now. You know, not from that perspective of home inspection, signed contract. But now, do we go back to Bank of America loan officers? Is it the same process? Like, what happens? Do we have to go back to NACA for anything? Yes. Yes, you do. So, after countersigned contracts are uploaded, NACA will call you to their office to do your actual signed papers, sign your actual bank application. And that's not with Bank of America. That's with NACA. That's with NACA certified Bank of America. NACA loan officer. Correct. Okay. Once you do that, within what? Anywhere from three to seven days, just like anything else, here yeah, you have your commitment. But again, you have to stay on top of your paperwork. So bank of so so basically, from once they get that initial approval, everything's handed off to the Bank of America loan officer. They run it like it's a normal loan. Yes. Right. They're doing their normal due diligence. They're using their appraisers, mm -hmm. using their appraisal management companies communication with you, the attorneys, however yes. that loan officer works their business, that Correct. loan officer works their business. And then you're saying now it could take them 28 days at a minimum. 28 days at a minimum. Now, I know that's not happening on every deal. It's, it's what, actually happening on a lot. Sometimes it's the sellers now. Okay. You know, because sometimes sellers accept programs thinking that they have time. Okay. You know, I know if I accept this program, you know, it might not close within, you know, 60 to 90 days. So I can do all the things that I need to do, stay in the house, not look for anything, or I have time to now get my commitment over here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the sellers can't get a commitment. That's like, true. That I've happens had, all the time. Yeah, I've had things, you know, we, we're at a situation now. We're waiting three months now for a seller to get a commitment. Pre-approvals are garbage. <laughs> my NACA member had her had her commitment in fourteen days. So the NACA people are gonna get they're gonna get thoroughly vetted. Yes. Right. They're gonna go through the motions. They're gonna go through whatever pain they gotta go through. They'll be frustrated. They're gonna be frustrated. And when they move into their house and they're like me, mm -hmm. paying less than two thousand dollars a month, next door to people that are paying three thousand and over. They're happening in a pig and slop. You'll be doing cartwheels in front of your house and. I've had NACA seminars at my church monthly, bi-monthly over the last eight years. Mm. Ever since I closed, it was the best thing. My friends, family members, everyone who I can I can think of. Listen, you got people who aren't even thinking about buying houses. Once I close in my house, you got to buy a house. You need to buy a house. You need to buy one now. All right. So let's let me. So let's just say you qualify for four hundred thousand, but you find a property that need works for three hundred thousand. Can you use the other 100 k to rehab? Does NACA do any type of rehab loans? Yes, they do. However, it's not, you have to take into consideration you're not approved for a purchase price. Mm -hmm. But you're, what you are approved for is a monthly amount. So if your initial monthly amount would be able to afford you a 400000 or $425,000 house, mm -hmm. and now you found one that was 300000 and instead of you paying twenty seven hundred a month, the three hundred thousand now has you at twenty four hundred a month. You can get enough rehab that will get you from the twenty four hundred to the twenty seven hundred. Really? Yeah. So over. So all right. So let me ask you this now, because we didn't touch into this. What about the self employed um, buyer, right? How are they underwriting or looking? Are they looking at the self employed buyer like any traditional loan? Yes, they are. And that's probably where the tax transcripts come into place. Okay. Because a lot of self employed buyers manipulate um, everything. Everything. Like you do it to get a car, you do it to get a house. However, you don't want to pay Uncle Sam that much, so then you go back later and you amend it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they want to see the tax transcripts. So if you are self employed and you want the big house and your self employment can afford you the big house, Guess what? You need to pay Uncle Sam for the next two years. What Uncle Sam is due so that this way you are approved for enough to where you feel comfortable okay. and what your business can afford you. So let's talk about, you know, because we, we're running up on time right now. So let's 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 give the people like a final word. What are your your ultimate dues? Like, like if I'm a new buyer, there's someone out here that's going to watch this tonight, tomorrow, a mm -hmm. month from now. Right. And they're looking to get into this NACA program and they don't know where to start. What advice or what can you tell them that will help them go through that, that NACA journey pain-free? To go to, through the NACA journey pain-free, I suggest you start saving your money. I suggest you start, just take a glance as to what's on the market, what type of house you would like. Try and find an agent that deals with NACA regularly so that they can walk you through the steps so this way you know how much money you need to save. 
A lot of people, again, they'll take the seminar, everyone is gun ho you know, they're fed off of the seminar and they want that first they're high. Day. They leave right. that seminar with energy, right? And you want that first appointment. However, I've seen people leave knock only proof for six hundred dollars. Mm. You know? Because they didn't give themselves enough time to save where they needed to be. Well, I've seen people who didn't know that they needed to have money to buy down their interest rate and they aren't able to get anything because they are only approved for 1800 or 1900 you know those are pretty much good numbers if your 1800 and 1900 comes with 40,000 50,000 in the bank mm. to get you to to that, to that buy down so i think first take a seminar um, get the ins and outs outs of it find out what it's about see if this is the program for you and if this is the program for you just save your money think about how much you pay a month in rent and how much you want to pay a month in mortgage. Everyone wants a $1,500 mortgage, and it was doable with NACA. Mm -hmm. I, ha I have friends who were able, Cambria Heights, $1,400 a month. However, this isn't the market for that. The market is about $2,000 and above. $2,000 above, so save your money. Save your money. Just like any home buyer, right? Exactly. Everybody thinks things are for free, it's mm -hmm. 100%, you don't need no money, no. So save your money is number one. Correct. Keep your credit. Above, what's their minimum score? 620. 620. So you need a 620 score with NACA. Save your money. Um, document everything that you're doing. Correct. You know, document your your rental payments. Don't pay with cash. Right. Um, and if you have to, then make sure that you're taking out whatever your monthly rent is. You take that out, you take that out and if you need additional funds on top of that, you can put your debit card back in and you go back to the telling you take out additional funds after you've taken out your rent. You want to... The best thing you could do with NACA is to make sure that you're establishing yourself and your file as someone who's up to speed, someone who's up to date. You want to make sure that you're uploading your documents or you're submitting your documents with your counselor. You know, you have a cover letter on top of your bank statements. You have a cover letter on top of your pay stubs. You're explaining your large deposits, your, Correct. your, your large withdrawals. You, you're documenting everything that you're Correct. doing. Correct. What I try to tell people, most people nowadays have multiple bank accounts and, sh and stuff like that, if right? If you have non-bank accounts yeah. and they ask for your last three bank statements, mm -hmm. then you're doing three times nine. Yeah, but also, do you have to disclose all your bank accounts? So let's say I have Chase and I want to use Chase as my... This is the house money, right? But I'm saving a certain percentage of my paycheck going in here. I have this money come, you know what I'm saying? Like, and everything else is being saved at TD, for example. Do I have to show my TD or can I just show my Chase because that's what I'm using for the transaction? You, you can do that, but if your dream house, let's say your dream house, you need 60,000 to buy your interest rate down because you have to have this particular one. Mm -hmm. But you only have 50,000 in Chase. Where you getting all the 10 from? So now you need now to pull it out of TV. Out. So you bring, so you bring that in. And a lot of people they do try to hide their accounts, and then they'll make a mistake like I did and transfer money from one account to the other account and, and at then, the end. And, and then that's when they see it. And, and then that's money. when they say like, "Aha! Yeah. Where this money come from? Now you gotta Correct. bring those statements and kind of backdate everything." Correct. So I tend to tell people it's best just to use to put in all your statements because you never know what. The house that you want, how much how much funds you'll need. Mm -hmm. And they accept gifts from other people as well. So what what happens if you go ahead and you change you change your jobs during the process? And At, it's a little bit less money. If it's less money, then you will they will reduce it. They so will reduce it, okay. The only thing that I can tell you, and that's another thing too, if if you change your jobs, hopefully you're staying in the same field because if you're starting a new career, they may consider that to be just start off. So really? now, yeah. So if I go from bank executive, mm -hmm. right, or bank manager, and then now I want to go work for Home Depot. Well, you better be a manager at Home Depot and put that manager after your title. Shit. <laughs> so they even look at that. What if your income stays the same, but your title just changes, or your income decreases a little bit? If Let's you, just say you went from a hundred k to ninety k, but you change titles. If you go from 100K to 90K and you're still able to maintain, you know, like, what if this person isn't living beyond their means? So they're still able to maintain their savings, then you're, then you're absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. However, if you aren't able to maintain, you know, what you've been telling them, then what I suggest you do, if you have student loans and you're paying $300 a month, call them and ask them to lower it 
lower it to 100. And if you still choose to pay the 300, then that's fine. That's good for you. But now you just lowered your DTI by $200. Pay off your credit cards or call your credit cards if your minimum payment's $100, get it reduced to $25. You just load your DTI $75. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's ways around different things legit, legitimately, but you just have to think outside the box to do it. And again, that goes according to representation and who you have. All on your representation. Your who, team is very important. Right. So your broker is very important. Your broker is very important. Yes, your it's, broker is very important. Say that again. Say it so they can hear you. Your broker <laughs> is very important. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you're going to do the NACA program, you need to work with a NACA specialist. Yes, you do. And that's who you are. So how can people find you here in New York? Unfortunately, she can't help you nationwide. Maybe you can. Maybe you can refer them to other NACA specialists. Um, yes, I can. across the country. So, Yeah. She can help you nationwide, but how can people find you today? What's your contact information? If they have more questions, if they want to book a consultation with you, like how do they find you? Well, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Diamond, like the stone, mm -hmm. mine, M I N E R E, short for real estate. So again, it's Diamond Mine R E. You can call the office at 516 292 4300. Take a look at our website www.diamondmineRE.com. Again, we closed on over 30 NACA deals over the last two years. There are other professionals out there. I've worked with them in the past. I bump into them while I'm showing other houses. You know, feel free to contact us. And if we're too busy, we'll definitely refer you to someone else who's able to take it on. And we are getting licensed in Pennsylvania. Okay. That should go through within the next two weeks. That's nice. So where are you licensed right now? Just New York? Just New York. Just New York and then Pennsylvania coming within the next 30 days tops. Correct. Okay. I like that. I like um, that expansion. Yes. <laughs> I do have someone in the DMV area, a really great agent, and I also have someone in Atlanta. Okay. So we have DC, we have Atlanta. So mm -hmm. if they're looking, if you're in those two markets, we can refer you to someone, right? Yes, we can. But Anything else you want to say about NACA program? Because I know this is like your, your, your baby right here. <laughs> yeah, NACA is pretty much my baby. But again, it's because I had to fall down, go through all the bumps and the bruises. And don't get me wrong, NACA isn't for everyone. Then that's when I give Matt a call or, you know, I'll give someone else a call and say, hey, listen, you know, I have a buyer. They don't want to do NACA. This is what it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. NACA isn't for everyone. It's, you know, if you are able to take advantage of it, by all means, because a 0% interest rate is... <laughs> It's awesome. That's I mean, ridiculous. I'm telling you, I used to brag at 1.6, but now I'm a little jealous. Yeah, that 1.6 kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> but now you tell me somebody out here with 0% interest Zero. rates on a three, four $400,000 house. Co That's absolutely insane. Correct. Listen, there you have it, man. There's, there's um, like I said, we can't give you everything because everybody's situation is different. It's not one size fit all. Right. But there was definitely a, enough information in, in this 20, 30 minute segment that you guys can, I hope you guys took a lot of notes. Um, Nadira gave you the information to, to reach her on. So if you have any questions about NACA, do not call me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't do NACA loans. NACA is not my thing, but I think it's a great program, and collaboration is greater than competition all, any day of the week. So for me, I'm not going to be on my platform and just talk about what benefits me. I want to help as many people as possible with home ownership. And I applaud you for that. And NACA is a great program. There's a lot of pros and cons, like Nadira said, you know, but again, if you're prepared, prior preparation prevents piss poor management people. Yes. And if you are prepared, like for anything, you can get through it, you can close, you can buy down your rate, you can have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous low interest rate with no PMI, um, and you have an expert now, like Nadira here, who can guide you through the whole process, hold your hand and help you get approved and go through a smooth transaction. So if you have any questions, like I said, don't call me. Call Nadera and I'm gonna Feel put free. all I'm gonna put all you know Nikki's contact information, Nadera's contact information. I'm gonna put it in the links after this live is over. So um I'm gonna wrap up this episode part this was episode number two of Rants and Gems Live. There's a lot of comments going on here but I'm not gonna to get to, to all of them. 
trolls you will get blocked <laughs> i'm going to go through these comments because i saw some comments about the trolls and my peoples are are, are are telling me there's trolls in here so i'm gonna go through here and i'm gonna block your asses because we don't do that in this community we don't talk shit about nobody we're here to educate we're here to help people grow and, and give good information that can help the next person so if you're a troll you will be blocked today but um you got anything else to say in there or are you good I'm pretty much good, but for all those who feel that they are ready for NACA right now this second, they, they're having a five-day event where they are approving people on the spot. That is from June 27th until July 1st at the casino on Rockaway Boulevard in Queens. Say that again for the people who hear you. They are having a five-day event where they are approving people on the spot. That is at the casino on Rockaway Boulevard in Queens. June 27th to July 1st. All right, there you guys. You heard it. If you're in New York, if you're in Queens or the five boroughs, make sure you go to that NACA event. Make sure you get that education. Learn the options. If this is a product for you, you should take advantage of it because honestly, there's nothing in the marketplace that can compete with those low interest rates um, with 100% financing and closing cost assistance. It sounds like a great program. Um, so take advantage of, of which, what's out there for you and call Nadira. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate everyone for watching tonight. This is, um, Rants and Gems episode number two. I kind of, I'm kind of liking this better than Instagram live. I'll be honest with you. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know, it's, and it's going to live here and, and that's why I like it. It's just going to stay on the, on the platform. And now people a month from now, two months from now, a year from now can come and watch it. Exactly. And um, Instagram Live, it was real. But this just gave me more energy to kind of get more people in here with me. Um, but signing off to next time. Monday night, join me again, 9 p.m. Monday night, 9 p.m. I don't know what that date is, but today's June 6th, so you'll figure it out. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so until next time, this is Matt Garland. In MLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. Catch me on Instagram, MG the Mortgage Guy. And um, I'll speak to you next time. Peace.